right, folks, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to learn how to set up an automated planning and workout routine using agents. Now, the idea is that you would feed an agent, a large language model connected to tools, with data that you're interested in regarding exercise. For example, papers about different exercise routines and their effects on your body or whatever the case may be. Uh, text files with transcriptions of YouTube videos or um, scraped text from web articles. All that information will be fed to an agent and the goal would be to prompt the agent to give you a workout routine according to your tailored specific needs. Like for example, you only have 15 minutes, uh, you don't have a lot of energy, you don't want to do strength, you want to do this or that, etc. And the model would then compile the workout that makes sense for you that's tailored to you. So to do that, we're going to use Langchain. It's an amazing framework to create agents that are powerful and do all sorts of stuff. And first, I start here by importing Langchain, uh, checking the version and just making sure that it matches the version um, on the Conda environment that I set up earlier. Uh, we're not going to be going through that, but I will make available a Colab notebook with the installation and everything can run. Just uh, You just need to have an OpenAI API key set up. Uh, then uh, the example I'm going to use is heavily uh, based on this uh, conversational retrieval agent from the link chain documentation. So you can go check that out. And I have a link in the Colab notebook. Now, to set up the agent, here's what we're going to do. The first thing is we need the data to set that agent up. And I'm going to clear all the outputs from my previous exercise. And here is what's going to happen. I will use Langchain's directory loader, which um, will, will use to load all the data necessary from a folder called resources. Now, how did I set up this resources folder and what kind of information I have in there? Well, I can go here to the notebook with the data setup and we'll just go through what that resources folder contains. Now, that should have information about personal notes on your objectives, PDFs for books and papers, like I mentioned. It could have tables, it could have transcripts of YouTube videos, etc. So what I did is I went through a bunch of YouTube URLs and then I downloaded those um, videos and transcribed their contents, saved those transcriptions to, fi to TXT files. So if I go here, you can see that we have YouTube video zero, YouTube video one. For the purpose of this video, we're just going to be going through. I have a smaller version of that data set of that data here so that everything runs relatively fast. Right. So when we have all that data combined there, as well as uh, PDF with in this case, I'm, um, I'm doing this PDF, I'm using this PDF with information about uh, how to squat properly in the kinetics of squatting, etc. Now, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna let me go back to the data setup. Uh, we're going to uh, compile all that information into the resources folder. So this is the scrape text function that I use to scrape all the web articles and put that information into the txt files. And we're going to also uh, combine that with personal notes about our personal interests and things that we're interested in from, you know, a variety of objectives. Like in my case, I like martial arts. So I put a lot of objectives here related to learning different martial art moves related to grappling because I do jujitsu. And all of that will be fed into the agent in order to create a more tailored workout routine for my particular purpose. All right. So this is just an overview of the data setup. So don't worry about that because you can, I will make available these things. Uh, I'm probably going to create a repo if, if I feel like this is, this takes it away from the experience of testing out this notebook, but at least the Colab notebook will have all the information that you need. Now, going back to the main notebook. So now here we're using Langchain's document loader directory loader to load all of these uh, documents with different formats, right? TXT file and uh, PDFs into a document and then split them into chunks. Now, remember that when we are doing rag pipelines, which is something called the retrieval augmented generation, and that's when you connect these documents with large language models. When the amount of text that you have on those documents is bigger than the context length of your model, meaning it cannot fit one prompt 
directly, you have to chunk that text uh, into these small bytes of texts and content, in, and then embed that, create a vector store, which is essentially a vector space with a bunch of embeddings that have all, the, all of that content represented in some way that captures the semantic meaning of the information on those documents. And then you can query that, and we're going to connect that to an agent in order to do something useful. So first stage is always to set up the documents, split them into chunks, and then the next step will be to create the embedding. So for that, we're going to use LangChain OpenAI embeddings, which uses the OpenAI embeddings. And we're going to use FICE as our vector store option. All right. So here I'm creating the embeddings. Here I'm creating the vector store. And I'm loading from the documents that I just split, that I just loaded and split over there. And from the embeddings that I just created over here. Now, if I run this, uh, we'll take two seconds. There you go. And now that we did that, since we're going to be using agents, we have to transform this vector database into a retriever tool. So to do that, we call the method as retriever, like I'm doing here. And now to create the tool, we're going to use LangChain uh, create retriever method, create retriever tool method. And then we're going to call it, we're going to give the retriever that we created earlier, we're going to give it a, uh, a name, which is going to be search exercise docs, and we're going to give it a description. And then we're going to say, ah, it searches excerpts from my notes, YouTube transcripts, web articles about exercising workouts, strength training, etc. And we're going to put that inside of a list so that we can feed it to an agent. All right. So to create the agent, we're going to need an agent constructor. Now, how do we do that? Well, we're going to use a high level method um, made available by LangChain called create OpenAI tools agent. And that's super easy. The first thing we need to set up the prompt. So for that, we're going to use LangChain's hub to load a very nice prompt for working with OpenAI tools. And we can inspect that the messages inside of that prompt. And we see that these messages are related to using OpenAI models. So you have the system message, which describes the overall behavior of OpenAI's models. Uh, messages placeholder, which is a placeholder for messages that you feed into chat OpenAI, to ChatGPT, stuff like that. Human message prompt template, which is a template over messages sent from users. And now that we have all of that set up, um, I can inspect the prompt so that you see that it's a chat prompt template. And we're going to set up the model so we're going to use LangChain's chat OpenAI, and I'm going to be using GPT-4 1106 Preview, which is like the best model uh, available right now, I'm pretty sure. And now that we have the model set up, what we're going to do is we're going to import the agent executor, which is going to handle the agent loop. And we're going to use the create OpenAI tools agent, which is a method made available by LangChain that allows you to create these agents very easily, right? And this we're not going to do. <laughs> Oh, go back one. There we go. There we go. So we're going to run that. And now we're going to create our agent. So just call the create OpenAI tools agent. We give the LLM chat, which is the model we set up earlier. We give it the tools that we set up earlier with the retriever, with all our documents and information. And we give the prompt that we loaded from the LangChain hub. And now that we created the agent, we have to put it in the loop, right? So to put it in a loop, we use the agent executor class, which is lane chains implementation that handles things like um, error handling and handles a bunch of stuff that you would have to handle yourself custom um, uh, manually in order to for the agent to have a, a way to respond to different things that can happen when it's trying to solve the particular problem or complete a certain task. So we're going to feed the agent and the tools, and we can have an agent executor. And now, finally, we can invoke that by calling the invoke method and giving a dictionary with the input and some uh, workout requests. So in my case, I'm saying, give me 10 minutes workout routines based on all the data you have available, but focusing on core strength. So I can run that, and then I can inspect the output right here by accessing through the output key of that result dictionary that we're going to get. So it will, it takes a few seconds usually to, to run because I'm, I'm running like a heavier model, right? I'm running GPT-4 preview or the 1106 GPT-4. But after a few seconds, 
or maybe more than a few seconds. Come on. 35 seconds. Oh my God. There we go. And now, there we go. We have a very nice workout routine with a bunch of stuff. Now, this is cool. But what would be even cooler would be if we could test out different situations to see if the way that the model is integrating information is actually interesting. So for example, I have this paper here, right? And it talks about the different kinetics of squatting. So I look at this and I think, hmm, so we can create something uh, like an interesting invoke question. We can say something like this, check it out. Let's see, I haven't tested this before, so let's test it right now. You say, uh, I want to do uh, legs today. Incorporate information from the paper by Hartman in order to produce a 20 minute workout leveraging exercises like squats to build strength and endurance. So something simple. I'm just saying incorporate information from that paper, right? And let's see what kind of result do I get. So I'm going to run this. And then again, I'm going to go mark down result output. And it will run as soon as the um, query for the agent finishes. So we can visualize that and see how well did it integrate the information from the paper. And I think these kinds of examples are kind of interesting because uh, when you're trying to integrate information from a paper as a non-expert, I mean, obviously you should always consult with an expert, but when you don't have anything like that available, uh, you wanna be able to at least check information and you wanna be able to relate to the sources that you actually provided the agent with. So let's see, warm up, light jogging, jumping, three minutes. So now the workout, deep squats, use weight challenge that allows you to maintain proper form. According to Hartman, deep squats can be effective exercise for protection against injuries and strengthening of the lower extremity when performed with proper technique. Okay, that's nice. And then the second exercise, the study suggests that completion in your muscular failure can cause greater forward leaning. So focus on maintaining an upright posture to minimize the risk of lumbar spine flexion. All right, this is nice. So as you folks can see, the exercises are incorporating information directly there. And it's explaining the context in which that exercise is being given, which I think is just super neat, super next level. And we can now take a look at the paper again. And we can take the information like, okay, uh, deep squats can be effective exercise for protection. Okay, so let's just look up deep squats here. So deep squats. So going to, to uh, deep squats do not contribute to increased risk of injury to passive. Okay. Ah, there we go. Deep squats present an effective training exercise for protection against injuries and strengthening of the lower extremity. Now that is very nice. So as you folks can see, and obviously I could implement um, returning the sources of uh, an answer so that I could know it immediately where the model took that information from to produce this. But as you folks can see, this is really cool because now you can not only integrate the information from the paper, but you can specify, look, I want you to integrate this type of information from this paper, and you get these explanations on why this exercise, why that exercise. I mean, of course, this is just one simple example, but uh, you can generalize that to some pretty awesome stuff. So I think that this is really cool, and I think this is super next level. So. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time. Cheers.